Hello everybody, my name is Brian Kelly and welcome back to Talk of the Town. We have a great show for you today. I'm continuing the series Behind the Faces of Milton and today we're going to talk with my Uncle Dick. <laughs> Dick, Dick Curtis, that's right, he lives here in Milton and uh, we're going to talk to Dick and hear a little bit about his career and his life in Milton and uh, I think you'll find it of interest because in, he's quite an interesting man if you don't know him and many of you already do know him so Uncle Dick welcome to the show. Thank you, nice to be here. <clears throat> it's uh, a lot of uh, years that I've been in Milton. How uh, many years have you been in Milton? Well let's see, we moved to Wendell Park in 1955. Bought a house on Wendell Park. From Wendell Park, <coughs> we went to... Um, uh, so 54 years. 54 yeah, years. We, yeah. You, tell the folks, you said you lived... Originally, you lived over on... Uh, what street in... Uh, Campbell in, Street. Campbell Street in Quincy. Yeah. That's over just past the Berkey, near the, uh, <coughs> the, the dairy freeze in Quincy. Yeah. Campbell Street. And you said your father bought in, on Campbell Street, and what did he think when he well, moved there? Well, all, all the people that bought on Campbell Street that year thought they were moving to Milton because the uh, developer advertised as each Milton Terrace. <laughs> and, but they were all surprised in the spring when they got a tax bill from Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember that. Dad was really buffalo. Oh, that's funny. But you couldn't do anything about and it. You have a, and you have a message to the... the People out, out there, our viewers who are smoking, right? What was the message oh. you wanted to share? No, no, no. What I see when I see the young kids with their mothers and fathers in the stores or at the uh, Mug of Muffin or wherever I am and Walgreens, and <clears throat> they'll all look at me. They probably never saw anyone wearing oxygen, which I have to wear uh, 24 7. <clears throat> so I said to them, if you don't want to end up like this, don't smoke. And the parents all said thanks. <laughs> well, how old are you today, Uncle Dick? Uh, I'm 86. I'll be 87 the 15th of October. How um, long is that? Well, two weeks? Two weeks. About two, two weeks. weeks. A little bit older. 87. Going to be 87. Well, 87. You know, and if you told me that anywhere along my life, <clears throat> 40 or 50 years ago, I'd never believe I'd make it. Well, you've been fortunate. You served in World War II. Correct? Yeah, I did. You were with the uh, what? The tank battalion? What, what did no, you, no, you, I, I, I was a tank commander in this country, and it's a long story. Well, we can't do that because we're going to talk about Milton. But give us a abbreviated. All right. Well, what happened was uh, I was picked out of the battalion with another guy, uh, something about a high IQ or something. And <laughs> <laughs> that was a misnomer. <laughs> Somebody who took the test uh, rated it wrong. But anyhow, I uh, I went to um, uh, Sam Houston State Teachers College, uh, Army Specialized Training Program, where all the soldiers were going to come out in uh, three months uh, as... Uh, Engineers. They needed engineers in the army, and uh, and we were studying hard. And uh, we had two weeks to go when the war got bad over in Europe, and uh, the uh, Congress and, and the army decided to disband the whole thing, and they dumped us all into the infantry, the 99th Infantry. Not all of us, but different infantry outfits that were ready to go overseas. And uh, <clears throat> so that's how I ended up. Uh, as a PFC in the uh, infantry. That's private first class? Yeah, and uh, well, that was the only thing that was open because the the, uh, the, the whole division was ready to go overseas and we shipped out of uh, Taunton. What the heck's the name of the... Well, that's all right, but you ended up over in Europe. And, yeah, uh, yeah, well, that's... What, what campaign did you end up... What, what, what particular thing do you remember of the war that... Oh, no, we were in the Battle of the Bulge. You were in the Battle of the Bulge. And were you on a tank? You no, were, no, no, no. Then no. I was just a rifleman. You're a rifleman, okay. And uh, I, I keep saying, after reading all the books and some books here about the... Um, there's quite an array of pictures on the wall, and there's a there's another picture over here with the hunt tent, with the, was it the 10th Armored Division at Fort Benning in, in Georgia. Matter of fact, I'm going to just zoom in on that so the folks at home can see what I'm talking about. And, uh, and there's a picture of the... Uh, 
10th Army Division in Fort Benning. 10,000 men. 10,000 men in this picture listening to what's happening in Europe at the time. And you can see, I'm scanning this picture that he has. And I'm going across. They were just... Uh, and this and this little marker here, you can see the marker on it. And that's that's my Uncle Dick, right? If you can see him, there he is, <laughs> right there. There he is. Yeah, one out of 10,000. One out of 10,000. Well, you are one out of a million. I've heard that before. Oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, but it's been quite a life. I, uh... I'm gonna just I'm gonna control the camera from here for a minute, Uncle Dick, and talk to you right from behind the camera a little it's bit. It's okay. So people can see you a little better. No problem. Okay, but tell us about your life here in Milton. You had oh um, yeah, I've got, a... I've got to tell you about that because uh, I told you about the East Milton Terrace, and uh, I went to Grindy Bryant School in Quincy and South Junior High School and Quincy High, and I I told all my children and, and grandchildren and everything that. We used to walk to school two and a half, three miles every day. In your bare feet? <laughs> no, we had shoes. <laughs> but you talk about that. I remember in the summer, we had sneakers. And every day, we'd get up in the morning and trace our feet on a piece of cardboard and cut it out and put it in the uh, in the sneaker because there were holes in the, in the heels and, and the toes. But um, it, it was, um, and then of course I went on to Quincy High. I graduated in 1940, and after the war I went to Berkeley College to study accounting. And, uh, and then you got involved in a in a family business. Is that yes, correct? We, that actually had an impact in Milton. So what, yes, was, what yes, was the we, family we, business? We had a uh, supermarket uh, chain and uh, Curtis Farm Supermarkets, and then we developed Curtis Compact Convenience Stores, and we merged with uh, Tedeschi's Food Stores uh, back in the 70s. Now, so the Tedeschi's that I see over on Randolph Ave, was that originally a Curtis Compact? That was our first one. And did, did you come up with the concept of a compact s store like that? I mean, well, long that, before 7-Eleven and <coughs> things like that, correct? Yeah, well, no, no, no. Uh, uh, 7-Eleven was in business. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but um, that was the first one that we uh, opened. And uh, we ended up, when we uh, merged, I think we had 32. At 32. Stores. Now, didn't you have a store in East Milton also? On well, we Avenue? had a supermarket down where, uh, where, where my is? wife goes. Oh, where Fitness Unlimited is? Yes. So right. you had a supermarket there. That was an A and P. That was an A and P. And they closed up, and we took it over. And in one week, we changed it all over, and painted it, and restocked it, and everything. And I can't remember how many years we were there before we left. We wanted to buy uh, Bow Motors property. Uh, that's where the fruit center is. That's today? where the fruit center is, and that's a gold mine. And so you wanted to buy that well, you property. know, people say, is that a gold mine? I said, no, it's a platinum mine. <laughs> That's how good it is. And, uh, but... Uh, well, the Mignosas do a nice job over there. They do. There's yeah. no question. Right. Unbelievable. And... Uh, it, and so, you yeah, that opportunity didn't arise at the time to buy the... No, the, the town jersey. refused us. Oh, the town refused you. And, uh, in fact, the story goes that they refused Mignosa also over years years back but when he first came and he said that's okay I'm going to build a snob housing and they changed their mind in a hurry. <laughs> that's the story I get I got you. now I never talked to McNosa personally to, to to verify anything to verify it but uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so how did you end up getting into the supermarket business in the first place well my father had a, a meat market right near uh, Villa Rosa re restaurant uh, in 1940, when I graduated from high school, we, my father had been in business in 1922 in Fields Corner, and uh, what was he doing in Fields Corner? Did he have a little meat market there? Oh, he had a good sized meat market. He had 16 clerks behind the counter every afternoon. Wow! Because the uh, rapid transit stopped right across the street in Fields Corner, and uh, then the people had to wait for buses to go to Milton Quincy in, in the South Shore. And so they'd run across the street and uh, buy their steak and, and whatever for, for, for the dinner. 
Yeah. And uh, that's how he had so many uh, clerks behind the counter. And in 1929, with the crash, uh, and uh, they, they extended the uh, rapid transit to Ashmont, and his business was cut in half uh, because of that. And so he struggled and, and finally closed up in 1940, and we took over Mr. Welch's, uh, Mr. Welch, I went, went to school with his son Tom, and uh, Mr. Welch was just getting out of the business. He was old, and his son didn't want any part of it. So we took over that little uh, meat market across the street from the A.M.P. And I said, gee, Dad, uh, you know. What, across from the A.M.P.? Where, in, that was in Quincy? Yeah. Where was a, the A.M.P.? Where the Burger right King is now? Right from, across uh, from uh, Villa Rosa. Is it, so where, so what building, where the Bank of America is today? That well, was to in, the right. To the right, where the paint place is? Yeah, the, uh, it's Sherman insurance Williams or, or a garage there or something. Oh, I, oh yeah, there's a garage over there, yes. And so that's that's where there was an A.M.P. at one time. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and so I, I criticized my father for opening up across the street. He said, he said Dick, he said, uh, there's always enough people that want good meat, you know, and service. And that's what we gave him. Kind of like Curry Hardware has done with the oh, Home yeah, Depot. Yeah, Same that's concept. a good example right there. So your father I just... go there all the time. But uh, uh, So Dad opened up there, and, and I helped him open it up. I had just got out of high school. And uh, and then uh, after I was, uh, I was working for a public accounting firm uh, on a job up in upstate New York, uh, when I got a phone call one thirty in the morning, my father had died, and uh, my mother had died five years before that. So uh, it, it was in a snowstorm. It was the worst, the worst train ride I ever had because uh, trying to get home. And so I never went back to the uh, accounting. And uh, a year or so later, I got together with my brothers and we incorporated and uh, we started out. And uh, Pompeo Motors uh, had a garage, and we had the nerve to go down and say, uh, you're not doing much business here, you should let us open a supermarket, and he did. And where was that? That was in South Weymouth? It's where, uh, no, no. no. Oh, Pompeo Garage, where's Pompeo Garage, where was that? It was on Adams Street, right where uh, Tedeschi's is now. On Adams Street? Well, Adams and uh, and... And Robinson and Shirley Street, right across from Atlas Liquors. Oh yes, yes. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, I know what you mean. Okay, <coughs> I got you. Yeah. On the corner, right where they, where the new, um, the new Tedeschi's is in there now. Correct. Yeah, I yeah. Gotcha. So that was that was Pompeo Motors. Yeah, and and uh, we tried to make a change in, in opening a supermarket. And so then you closed the little meat market across the street and moved everything over to the new yeah. location. But uh, one one funny story is that's the. <laughs> My son Rick was born the same minute that we opened that store. Mayor Della Chiesa was cutting the ribbon, and my wife was having a cesarean the same minute. And uh, so I wasn't at the store opening, but around, and that was at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, around noontime, I said to the doctor, well, I've got to go. you got to go where? I said, <laughs> They just opened our first supermarket, <laughs> and I'm the manager. <laughs> so I went down, and there was the place you couldn't find a parking space. So I was like, went on Hilda Street and parked in Mrs. Doyle's driveway. <laughs> now, was the A&P still open at that time? Oh, yeah. Okay. And um, so we uh, we opened it. And I went up, and they had a, a policeman at the door letting five people in as five people came out. And, and he put his hand up and stopped me. I said, you can't stop me. I'm the manager. <laughs> well, anyhow, that was the beginning. And uh, I was at every store opening since then. But uh, How many stores did you end up with? We ended up with 10 supermarkets and 32 convenience stores and one liquor store. And uh, But back to Milton, uh, we moved to uh, Wendell Park, which was very lovely, and we loved that thing, and then we went from there to uh, uh, Parkwood Drive. Which is off of Hillside? Off of Hillside, and built a house up there. And after that, where did we go from there? We went to here. To here, right. Yeah, so 
Okay. So where is here? Oh, yeah, <laughs> at the Quincy Brook Condominiums. I gotcha. And <clears throat> very local. Uh, it's very nice, uh, convenient. And we've been here, what, 18 years. What do you like best about Milton? Well, it's a nice town to live in to begin with. I was in Rotary for over 20 years. And uh, it, it's uh, just a, a, a great town. Uh, I, I don't don't agree with all the overrides, but that's... <laughs> <coughs> at my age, who cares? <laughs> you know, that's my opinion. I, sure. That's why I never went into politics. I'm very opinionated. <laughs> So anyhow, uh, you've been a member over at Wallace and Golf Club for a while, haven't well, you? Oh my lord, yeah, that that's a big part of my life. Uh, I uh, oh, I, a quick story. <clears throat> I'm getting discharged after seven and a half months in the hospital for my wounds. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They don't know where you get the where did you get the wounds? Over in Germany. Well, they, the folks don't know that. You and I don't them. blame that guy that pulled the trigger because he was just doing his job. Like I was trying to do mine. So what happened? Um, well, we were, were, we were attacking the Siegfried Line, which was supposed to be the impenetrable German line of defense. And uh, we had to wait. We, we, we went across this fire break, and uh, we spread out. And we were waiting for the fourth platoon to come up with the, the flamethrowers and the, and the torpedo, Bangladesh torpedoes and everything. And... Uh, the Germans had our positions all zeroed in and they started throwing in the 88s and the mortars and an 88 shell hit the tree that I was above. Being a good soldier, I dove for the tree. You put your hands over your head and, you, and I was right up against the, um, the tree and when, when, the, when the shell hit it, uh, uh, I was momentarily stunned and, and um, my... Uh, when I came to, my feet were, were around the tree instead of my head. <laughs> so I bounced along the ground, but <clears throat> I owe my life to four uh, medics, uh, conscientious objectors, or whatever you want to call them, but they were right up there on the front with us, and uh, they didn't have any guns or anything, And uh, but four of them carried me five miles through, Back through the Ardennes in, in knee-high snow, where it had been a big blizzard the week before. And uh, I, <clears throat> my buddy, George Norton, who was uh, from Quincy, a little younger than me, my brother Dave's age, and uh, he, he and I were in the same outfit, and he, he remembered when he got home, he said, Dick, he said, I can't believe when you got hit, well, quite a few of us got hit with that barrage that went through, but uh, he said, all you complained about was your back, your back, and I looked down and your both legs were a bloody mess. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but he he was one of three of 200 men uh, from our original company that went through the whole war, uh, didn't get killed, captured, or wounded. Three men. And he was one of them, and we had 115% casualties. Now, how do you have 115% casualty? Because we had uh, replacements that come up, and they got killed, captured, and wounded. But uh, it, it was um, it was an unbelievable thing, uh, and and I keep saying that I was lucky to get wounded early in the war because some of the the uh, people in my division were were. Uh, you know, a week later, we're captured, and, and uh, uh, this one one platoon was uh, the most decorated uh, platoon in the in the in the army. And, and I read a book about them, and uh, they uh, they were captured, and what they had to go through uh, was unbelievable. The, the 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 Germans didn't treat them well. They uh, underfed, and half of them died from malnutrition and everything. So i am just been a lucky guy. And <laughs> Well, it's funny you say, I'm going to just come over and join you for a minute now. I mean, nice to be here. <laughs> it's, nice, it's nice to be here, isn't it? Now I'm on oxygen, and I uh, <laughs> don't know how long that'll last. 
but uh, if I go tomorrow, I've had a great life. And you mentioned something. You said you don't uh, begrudge the person that shot you. No, no, he was <coughs> doing his job on the other side, and uh, you know, how can you hold up? If if I want to hold any, it's it's against Hitler and and the uh, the, the, the leadership, uh, right? The leadership, same as our country. Right. But that, funny you should say that because just in um, in the paper this weekend, yeah, there was a gentleman that. Um, took there's a there's a flying fortress. There's some of the old planes from World oh, War II. Oh, I saw that. They're traveling around the country. Yeah. And uh, this gentleman was 92 years old. Yeah. And he flew. And his last mission, they got hit. Yeah. And um, but the 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 plane didn't blow up. And the pilot that hit them, the German pilot that hit them, flew beside them while the plane was kind yeah. of breaking apart. Yeah, yeah. And all of them got out of the plane. Yeah. And they jumped. I think one might have died, but he was the last one out of the plane. And he said as he jumped out of the plane, he looked over at the pilot and he saluted him. <laughs> and he said he was thanking him for not killing them all oh, yeah. and giving them a shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, he was captured when he landed on the ground. But that was quite an amazing story. And it rang with me when you said, hey, you know, he was just doing his job. And um, so that gentleman got to fly. They... Let him fly yeah. on the plane last weekend. And, that uh, was great. And 92 years old, he got to <coughs> he got to land it. So it was. Well, we were young, and and the uh, esprit de corps and the patriotism back. It's the say 1939-40 when when we get into the war, and uh, everybody in my neighborhood was able. We all volunteered. Oh, here's another one. I volunteered for the. They had a big ad in the, in the in the Washington papers and come into uh, 1065 Commonwealth. I remember the number, and I went in and volunteered, and I think it was 10,000 men in one week volunteered through the uh, the notice that was in the paper. Yeah, and uh, so we were on a train for almost three days, and. Uh, it said, you know, go go to Florida, and I had never been to Florida in the winter, and it was in November uh, when I en uh, enlisted. And, and <laughs> it sounded good, eh? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, we we ended up in Fort Benning, Georgia, <clears throat> in the Tenth Armored Division. You so say you never made it to Florida. <laughs> And I thought that was the worst thing in the world for them to advertise and, and uh, <laughs> rope in 10,000 kids uh, from the Boston area and end up in, in uh, well, we didn't all go to uh, uh, the, the Fort Benning, but most of us did. And uh, I even went to the chaplain and I got a T.S. slip, you know. What's a T.S. slip? Tupshitsky. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, talking back the army, you know, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I went into Storm and became a tank commander, and, and like I said, uh, after the war maneuvers, we ended up at Camp Gordon in Georgia, and that's where I, I, I went home for a 15-day furlough, and it was only a three-day home, and I get a telegram report back uh, immediately, you've been selected. Oh, I was BS because uh, I hadn't had a, a right. fellow for a year and a half. Right. Well, anyhow, I'm here to talk about it. Now, and, didn't uh, you know one of the gentlemen over, a friend of yours from the golf club, Mr. Sweeney, is it? That was in World War Two. Oh, yeah, General Sweeney. You knew him? Oh, sure. Yeah. He was a member of Wallison, and his son is a uh, colonel now in the uh, Air Force. Oh, wow. And, uh, <coughs> oh, yeah, I read... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that's the cigarettes. <clears throat> <laughs> and uh, General Sweeney was was uh, decorated, and and Tibbets, the one that uh, flew the first bomb on on Japan, he, he said about uh, Charlie Sweeney that he was the best pilot that he had ever uh, met in his life, and that's why he picked him out. And he said he probably flew every type of plane that the uh, U.S. Army had, the Air Force. And uh, that's why uh, Sweeney developed 
uh, you know, is... Uh, That's why they wanted him yeah, to Yeah, they, they had him. But, uh, hey, it's... Uh, and then when did you get married to Bonnie? <laughs> When, when, when you came back from the war? Oh, you mean when I went to jail? Yeah, when, you know. Yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was 1953. Uh-huh. 56 years. How did we ever make it? Well, uh, the first 20-odd years, uh, I worked 80 hours a week and I was never home. And my daughter, my oldest daughter said, the one thing I remember about my father is the back of his head going to work in the morning when, before we went to school. And he didn't get home at 11 o'clock at night, so I never saw him other than that. And uh, I think I went, I don't know how many years, without any vacation. And uh, we worked hard for what we had. And uh, you had how many children? Uh, just three, a boy and two girls. And my son now is running uh, Curtis Liquors down in Weymouth and uh, in Cohasset. And he's doing a good job. As long as I keep getting the... Uh, Give it in check. And uh, and my daughter Deborah is in Florida. Has two children, and she became a lawyer. She's in Florida, isn't she? In Virginia? I mean, no, no, Virginia. No, Virginia, Virginia. I'm sorry. She works for the uh, Fairfax County uh, DA's office or something. Or? Yeah. Well, no. She she uh, defends the state of uh, Virginia uh, in child abuse cases. Oh, okay. And uh, she won't tell us about them because they're horrid. Right. And uh, she enjoys, she goes to court every day and she enjoys it. And, and then and your other daughter, Lisa, is an entertainer, entertainer, isn't she? Lisa has, <clears throat> has worked for um, <clears throat> uh, Disney World for about eight years and now she's been something like 15 years with uh, Universal. And uh, two years ago, she also became a uh, massage therapy. Uh, and she uh, works for uh, Universal and the Barney Show. She runs that. What's it called? The what? The Barney Show. Oh, the Barney Show? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And she loves it because all the young kids come there. And, and she's very good. I know, I always said that if, if we had a party and Lisa was there in five minutes, she'd have everyone laughing. <laughs> But uh, she is uh, doing well, and uh, well, she. The story I say is that she had three dogs, and she divorced one. Oh, it's got one of the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dick, you've had a long life. Uh, oh. What many would consider a successful life, and, and success is judged in many ways. So, looking back, if there was one thing you could change about your life, is it would you? Well, is there anything you would have changed? No. Uh, Another story, I had been dating uh, a Milton girl uh, before we in the Army, and uh, she wanted to get engaged. And I said, no, I said, I might not, might not come back. I might come back crippled or whatever. And uh, so uh, I was still getting the uh, email letters, not email, but they call them V-mail back in those days. And, uh, v, V-mail? V-mail, they call it. And uh, it was supposed to be fast. And uh, she, um, the first, when I got back, she told me she was dating someone else. Uh -huh. So uh, that was one of the good things because uh, nothing wrong with her, but uh, I now married my wife Connie, Connie, and, Connie. Uh, and I got very lucky. <laughs> and I told you I've been a lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> and now with my problems, she's really taking care of me. And, uh, you appreciate that. Oh, well, anyhow, but she has been great, and my, my kids are great. So not a bad life. Oh. Yeah. L-U-C-K-Y. Dick Curtis. Man. You're a lucky man. Oh. Well, Dick, I appreciate you sharing your, your life with the, well, with the viewers at home. And uh, Mother said you'd never get it done in a half an hour. <laughs> and we did, didn't we? Huh? Well, uh, yeah, it's not over yet. Uh, Dickie's, uh, my mom is Dickie's sister, and she was the youngest of the group. And, she, uh, beautiful. So, uh, and yeah. Unfortunately, she's in Hancock Park now. Well, she's in a good place. Uh, my mom's in a nursing home now, but she's doing well. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. She's, she's being well cared for. A beautiful girl. She worked hard her whole life and had a nice family, and uh, hey. things change. They and do. You can't, you know, you think it's forever, but it isn't. 
So be prepared. <laughs> We're only here for a flicker, as they That's say. That's all. So, okay. Yeah, life. And, and, One you know, day at a time, sweet yeah, Jesus. But, but then, you know, you <laughs> talk about the war and everything and all my buddies. Right. Right. They didn't get to live a long, full life like you did. So. Well, Dick Cur again, folks. Just lucky. <laughs> we've been talking with Dick Curtis, a longtime resident of Milton, has had a, a career spinning uh, the war, World War II, then um, then in business uh, with the Curtis supermarket chain, and uh, and has quite a, has had quite a fulfilling life, and uh, we're glad that he was able to share it with us today. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to spend with us and, and watch and talk of the time, talk of the town. And my name is Brian Kelly. I thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon. Dick, say goodbye, Dick. Dick. Say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. <laughs> <laughs>